Well, good morning, folks. We're into the countdown now, aren't we? Are you excited or a little bit nervous? I, I suppose I, I'm a little bit of both. Curious is another emotion. Curious as to how it will all work out practically. Of course, as, as Andy told us on Monday, there is a, a short video to explain things to you. Uh, the thing that we must all remember is that God is the blessed controller of all things. And to quote Psalm 95, in his hands are all the corners of the earth. So that's our little corner catered for. And all we have to do is to remember, uh, as it says in the hymn, uh, Jesus bids us shine in our small corner. So bring it on. Bring on the shine. In Andy's talk uh, on Monday, we heard about the courage of Nehemiah. Nehemiah, who was a cupbearer to the king, and approaching the king with a sad face was a dangerous enough thing. But he prayed persistently to God to grant him favour in the presence of the king. The work he was anticipating was pleasing to God's heart, and God was in it with him. When he explained his sadness to the king, the king not only facilitated his request to go and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, but he also helped practically and financially. A wonderful answer to prayer. Now, at the time of this prayer, also Nehemiah's prayer, Nehemiah is... Back in Jerusalem, he's in Jerusalem, he's been started the wall, he's been building, he's exhausted after many work, many weeks of, of hard work. And if that isn't bad enough, an enemy, Sanballat, was trying to destroy everything. By first criticising and belittling the work, and then intimidating the workers. And on top of all that, there was a division in the ranks of Nehemiah's workforce, more work of the unseen enemy. Yet through it all, Nehemiah's integrity, courage and God-focused encouragement kept the work moving ahead until the walls were nearly completed. But his enemy didn't give up. He tried a new tactic. Another time when Nehemiah was in need of rest. He, he repeatedly requested a meeting. Come and meet me. Come and meet me. He was trying to lure Nehemiah away from the work, probably in an attempt to kidnap him or to kill him even. But again, Nehemiah resisted every temptation. Did the enemy give up? No. He then launched a slanderous attack of rumours on Nehemiah's character and the motive behind the rebuilding of the wall, saying it was for his, Nehemiah's own advantage and, and that he wanted to be rich and powerful. Did Nehemiah give up? Did he quit? He faced backbreaking weariness, an undeserved attack. But no, Nehemiah again and again he returned to prayer. He did what he'd done all along when difficulties presented themselves. He prayed and then he prayed again and then he prayed again. Persistent prayer. Quoting Nehemiah 6 verse 9. They were all trying to frighten us, thinking their hands will get too weak for the work and it will not be completed. But I prayed, now strengthen my hands. We can surely learn for this. Even though we're moving in God's will, even though we're working in God's will and living in his will, the path will not always be smooth. The enemy is out to cause problems at every twist and turn. I think this is something we can be very aware of as our church opens up again for public worship. But let's look at Nehemiah's prayer and the consequences and results. Note that Nehemiah did not pray that God would finish the wall for him, as I might have done. 
He prayed for strength to do the job. And God worked a miracle in him. And the result? Well, the wall was completed in a mere 52 days. No one would have believed it possible. It was a miracle for all to see. And even Nehemiah's enemies became so discouraged that they were led to acknowledge that the rebuilding of the walls was the work of God. Nehemiah's persistence in prayer, he refused to quit and God did not fail to bless. And it was plain for all to see. Reading Nehemiah 6 verse 16. When all our enemies heard about this, all the surrounding nations were afraid and lost their self-confidence because they realised that this work had been done with the help of our God. The wall, the work of Nehemiah's hands and those of all who helped him was a witness to the presence and power of God. Now, we're not physically building yet, but we are attempting, after four months of closure, to open again, to open up our church building for worship and in worship. Maybe we'll be flooded with folk and that would have its own difficulties. We don't know. We will know soon. We don't know yet. Whatever happens, Opening our doors for prayer and worship is undoubtedly a witness to our community. God is living and loving. Our God is living and loving. Active in this place in spite of COVID-19. We're not only a surviving church, but a thriving church. Open for thanksgiving, prayer and worship. Now, those of you who don't feel safe enough to come out just yet, please don't feel that you're missing out in any way. You have an essential part to play in the return to worship. You need to pray for those who are coming out. Pray that they will be strengthened in body, in mind and spirit. Pray for, for protection from the virus, for the whole church. Pray for Andy and pray for those who have taken on the job of steward to direct and advise worshippers. Don't wait until Sunday. Start now, right now. Be directed by all these great prayers we've been studying over the past weeks to pray and pray and pray again. Whenever you think about it during the day, oh, church is opening up again on Sunday, pray a little dark prayer to God. Those of you who are coming out on Sunday, you do the same and start now. And I would appreciate your prayers too, for me personally. I've been recent, recently combated and defeated the shingles virus. I've been left a little fatigued. So I would appreciate your prayers for strength and restoration as I continue to pray daily for all of you. And don't forget, as we've seen on our church poster, God doesn't answer email, but he answers knee mail. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, how blessed we are to be loved by you. You are awesome and worthy of all praise. We pray now for your church in this place. We pray for your presence and your protection from all assaults of the enemy. We pray that our church will be a living and loving witness of our living and loving God. In Jesus' name we pray. And so, dear friends, the blessing and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and all those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. So, that's all for today. 
and I will see you on Sunday and what a joy that will be. Bye for now.